Hey, Pretty Girl Club. So today I want to talk about how some people, they try to identity police you. They try to say, well, you know, you can call yourself exotical, but a racist police officer is still going to shoot you. Or basically you're still going to uh, encounter racism or you're still going to encounter anti-blackness. But my response to that is, okay, so, so what? You don't get to tell me how I should navigate through society. I get to address my DNA however I see fit. So if I have a background that is black, white, Latin American, I can embrace all of those things if I want to. I don't care if somebody else is racist or someone else is ignorant or I don't fit into someone else's stereotypical box. I don't have to spend my life fitting into someone else's stereotypical box. So just because you define yourself based on what the white man thinks of you or based on what a racist police officer thinks of you or based on what, you know, what racist people think, oh, uh, according to white men, we're all black anyway because they're all going to, they're going to one drop us. I don't care who's one dropping what. I don't care what some random dusty guy on the internet thinks of all black people or that all black people look alike. I don't care about that. You know why? Because I am in charge of calling myself by whatever nickname I feel best describes my identity. I get to choose how I want to navigate through society. I get to decide what terms of endearment or nicknames I want to call myself. And we as MLS people have the right to take back terms that used to be um, used against us, such as words like mulatto, words like yellow bone, red bone, light skin, exotical. We get to take these terms that were in the past used as something negative and we get to turn them into something positive. Just like how in the unambiguous community, they take words like the N word and they use it as a term of endearment. Um, they take words that are terms of endearment to dis to describe their skin tones, like they call themselves chocolate or, you know, ebony, coffee colored or whatever. They can call their hair by whatever terms of endearment nickname they want to call it by. Or I've even seen some women take back the word nappy and they call their hair nappy in a positive way. And they say, I'm happy to be nappy or whatever. So guess what? Just like you get to navigate your identity however you see fit, we get to do the same thing over here. And we're not going anywhere, baby, because the exoticals have united. So if we want to call our skin tones by whatever nicknames we feel comfortable calling ourselves, then that's what we can do. If we want to choose to embrace all of our DNA, guess what? You don't get to blood quantum police our DNA. Because I've seen some people where they'll be like, oh, well, you're not 50% white. So if, if you don't have at least 50% whiteness, you are not allowed to embrace your identity. You're not allowed to embrace being mixed or, you know, you better get back over here in the black community with us. First of all, embracing being mixed doesn't mean you're denying being black. So that's how I know that anyone who makes that comment is very ignorant, very monoracial, monocultural. Clearly that type of person has no mixed race friends or family members and doesn't interact with mixed people because um, acknowledging that you are mixed is not denying that you're black. The point of this channel is not to deny blackness. All we're saying is, hey, I am black and X, Y, Z. So you're embracing your blackness, but you're also embracing your other ancestries just as much as your blackness or, you know, to whatever degree you feel comfortable embracing those things. We as multiracial people have the right to acknowledge our ancestors, acknowledge our family members, acknowledge our mom's side, our grandma, whoever. We're not going to pretend that our own family members exist so that we can fit into your stereotypical boxes. And guess what? We can use whatever nicknames or silly terminologies that we choose to use. We can take those terminologies back and we can use those as nicknames for ourselves. You don't get to tell other people how they can run their culture. You don't get to tell other racial groups how they should navigate through society, how they should, you know, what nicknames they should call themselves. I don't see you keeping that energy with white people. I don't see you walking up to a white girl and saying, oh, excuse me, I saw that you called yourself Italian. You shouldn't call yourself that. You need to call yourself white. Oh, I'm sorry. I saw that you are 25% Polish and 75% Swedish. Um, no, you need to just call yourself white. You're just a regular white girl. No, I don't see you keeping the same energy with white girls. So why is it that all of a sudden when a person has blackness as one of the core parts of their identity, then suddenly people feel the need to police it? Guess what? You're not doing it over here, baby. This channel is dominated by mixed race women of all complexions, 
It's dominated by light-skinned monoracial women. So when I say monoracial, I'm talking about women who are more than 75% African. So maybe you're 80% African, 90% African, and you happen to be the exception. You know how on the Black Women Empowerment channels, they like to say, oh, well, there are exceptions, but the exceptions don't make the rule. Okay, well, guess what? The exceptions are welcome all on this channel then. And we have the right to embrace all sides of ourselves. Other people do not get to control how you navigate through society. Other people do not get to control how you see yourself. And I've noticed that some people, when they have an inferiority complex, they want to control your self-perception. So they don't like when you get to determine what nickname to call your skin tone. Something as simple as a nickname using terms like light skin, dark skin, you know, caramel, butter pecan, whatever. People get offended if you call your skin tone by a nickname. But I've noticed people don't get offended if you call yourself a dark skin nickname. It's only that people get offended if you call yourself a lighter skin nickname. That's when people start getting triggered because you are kind of bringing up their inferiority complex. But acknowledging your own skin tone, especially on this YouTube channel where we talk about those topics, acknowledging your own skin tone, that is not you saying anything negative about somebody else's skin tone. Like if a white girl says she has porcelain skin, I don't say you're a colorist. You think you're better than me because you love your porcelain skin tone. Just because someone loves themselves and they look different than you doesn't mean that they are being a supremacist or that they're hating on you. And people are like, oh, well, you think you're cute. And it's like, what am I supposed to think of myself? Am I supposed to think I'm ugly? Am I supposed to think I'm inferior to everyone? Am I supposed to think I'm just basic and blending in and I'm replaceable and I'm average and I'm nothing special? No, just because you think that about yourself doesn't mean that I have to think that way about me. So here in the Exoticals United community, we will continue to talk about the issues that mixed race women face of all shades. Um, by the way, when it comes to the mixed race people group, we are not all 50% white, 50% black. So that's another misconception that I am fighting against on this channel. Um, I am here to help us celebrate the beauty and the diversity of multiracial people. So, and also not all of us are biracial. The term biracial really just means you have ancestry from two races. Um, a lot of us are triracial. That's actually just a term that I'm kind of using on YouTube that I've heard a lot of you guys use, triracial. So that means you have three racial backgrounds. Um, a lot of us are multiracial. Maybe you have four racial backgrounds or, you know, you're not just 50% of one thing and 50% of something else. Another thing that we talk about on this channel is how a lot of us are multi-generationally mixed. All that means is that your racial mixture, it is not divided up like, okay, you have one fully white parent, one fully black parent. No, maybe you have two biracial parents. So, you know, you have one parent that's half black, half white. Your other parent is also half black, half white. And actually, maybe your grandparents, maybe all four of your grandparents are half black, half white. We see this as something that's very common in Creole communities, where maybe you are Creole on both sides, going back for multiple generations. That is an example of being multi multi-generationally mixed. So here on this channel, I don't care how your mixture is dispersed. I don't care if you are 50% of one thing and 50% of another thing, because anyone who's actually mixed race understands that the way DNA works, first of all, ancestry DNA tests are flawed. So that's number one. But number two, um, not all of us have an even 50-50 split. Some of us are 33-33-33, black, white, Asian, you know, or we just have so many different things um, kind of pumping in our DNA and pumping through our blood. And guess what? We have the right to be proud of our ancestries just like anyone else. We have the right to embrace our skin tones just like everyone else. Me simply having a YouTube channel is not thinking I'm superior. No, you think I'm superior. That's why you're saying this. And then I've had some people try to say, oh, you sound like you're a, you're a white woman. So because I don't speak in African-American vernacular English, that makes me a white woman. I'm sorry, your anti-blackness is showing. So it's funny how a lot of people love to accuse you of being anti-black when you're mixed race, but those same people love to use anti-blackness against you. Like when people try to say, Tiny is ugly, or Lotto the rapper is ugly, or LMI, or all of these women who have, you know, they look like women of color, they try to say that they're ugly. You don't realize that you're actually using anti-blackness against mixed women because you're trying to say that what makes them ugly is essentially their black features or their features that make them non-white passing. But here on this YouTube channel, we do not tolerate any of that because the exoticals have united, baby. Across skin tones, across hair textures, we don't care if you're 50%, 25%, 35%. That's not what 
that's not what the big deal is on this channel. We are celebrating our similarities and we are uniting because we've gone for too long without having a space. Uh, for a long time, we have served as kind of the emotional punching bags of the black community. We have been thrown in and out of our white side, in, in and out of your Asian side or whatever your other mixtures are. And so guess what? This is a space where finally we get to dominate the conversation. Finally, we get to talk about the light skin side of, you know, skin tone politics or how people treat us based on our skin tones or the stereotypes that other people um, place on us based on our skin tones. We get to talk about what it's like to be a black passing mixed person because a lot of people, they only acknowledge white passing mixed people, but guess what? Just like a person can be white passing and mixed, a person can also be black passing and mixed. So we get to talk about those experiences on this channel. And it's funny how in the black community, for example, they will say, get out of our spaces, stop replacing us, go create your own channels, go create your own platform. You guys need to go compete against each other. You guys need to go talk to each other. You guys need to go do this with each other. It's not our fault that you guys didn't do this. Nobody's stopping you. No one's stopping the light skins from speaking out about their experiences. Well, guess what? We've done it, baby. 10,000 subscribers here on the Exoticals United YouTube channel. We've also got other Exoticals creating their own YouTube channels. And by the way, when I use the term exotical on this channel, it's really a terminology that I am taking back because that's a term that people used to say against me when I was here on YouTube um, a long time ago. But when I use that term on this channel, all I mean is either being mixed or looking mixed. When I use the term looking mixed, I'm really talking about people who get mistaken for mixed. Maybe you are not mixed or maybe you consider yourself to be monoracial because you have you know, overwhelming majority of African ancestry. Maybe you're 80% African, 90% African, but for whatever reason, you just happen to come out with maybe a loose hair texture. Maybe your facial features look different. Maybe you happen to be born very light skinned or whatever. And so that's what I mean when I use the terminology looking mixed, because I also feel like women like that, women who look mixed, but they have overwhelming African ancestry, so they're essentially monoracial. These are women like Tyra Banks, for example. Um, women like that, they don't often get included in the black, you know, the quote unquote black conversation because in the black community, they believe that your race is whatever you look like. So Tyra Banks, your race would be mixed race then according to that logic. Um, because you don't look like the average monoracial black woman. Now, I know that Tyra Banks, you know, she did her DNA or whatever, and she's like 80% black or like very high African. But there are flaws in that logic, though, where people say, oh, your race is whatever you look like. No, you have to remember that at the end of the day, race is a social construct. And so I like to take that into consideration on this YouTube channel. That's why I really just say, hey, Whichever one you believe in, whether it's the DNA test, whether it's, you know, based on how you look, maybe that's what makes you relate to my channel. Whichever one of those it is, usually it's one of those two things. Either you relate to this channel because of your DNA or you relate to this channel because of your phenotype. Um, whichever category you fit into, this is the channel for you because a lot of the other YouTube channels, they're only taking into account one phenotype, you know, kind of maybe one culture, one racial background, and that's fine. But guess what? This channel is here to play and we're here to stay. By the way, be sure to follow my um, backup YouTube channel. That is the Exoticals Unfiltered channel and be sure to join the Patreon. But what do you ladies think? Have you ever noticed how funny it is how as soon as we start our own platform and it starts to pick up steam, suddenly everyone wants to hop on our bandwagon. They want to come watch this channel. They want to come comment on this channel. They want to come insert themselves into our conversations or they want to, you know, suddenly get mad that we actually listened to them and they said, get out of their spaces and create your own. So, so then we did, but then by creating our own space, we are being superior and thinking that we are better. And I'm being a mixed race supremacist by creating a YouTube channel about mixed people. And I'm being a colorist by talking about light skin people. And I'm being a texturist by talking about people with type three hair textures. And then I'm also being a featurist by talking about women who have maybe more of an East African phenotype. That's being a featurist. So what do you guys think? I've noticed that it seems like we're damned if we do, damned if we don't. Let me know what you think in the comments section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.